Whenever I think about change, I find it heartening to remember that even when I feel like I'm sitting still, the earth is rotating and I'm moving really fast, actually, all the time. When I look up in the sky and I see the cycles of the moon every night changing, it reminds me that I'm part of an ecosystem that is ever in flux, more like a mobile with all of the pieces balancing one another than like a stone sculpture of stillness. It's true with the oceans and the tides. It's true with the seasons that they're always changing. Every day is different. I know that people who are here today and watching this are from different parts of the earth. And so how the change happens varies depending on where you are. I'm in the north, I'm up here in Minnesota. So now, as we approach the fall equinox, the days are getting shorter. And as we cross that threshold, it feels like every day the days get shorter. Like you can just see them getting shorter every day. And I know, because I've been around the block a few times, that they're gonna continue getting shorter until the winter solstice at which point they'll start getting a little bit longer. And that's good to know because along about the winter solstice and especially around about February in Minnesota, it's really good to know that the days are getting longer even though they still feel very, very short. You know, I've been reflecting on how my relationship with the earth and with the earth holidays, the solstices and the equinoxes has in fact changed. One thing that I've always loved and I just talked about is the predictability of the seasons. Summer always comes after spring, even if spring is unseasonably early or late or short or wet, still summer comes after spring. I know heading into fall that it will be followed by winter. That's not going to be just determined by a vote or by a human consensus. It's also true, however, that the earth is changing, changing in ways that I believe and most people who believe in science believe is caused by overuse of resources. Every year they measure what day of the year we've used enough resources that are renewable from the earth and the rest of it were on borrowed time. And this year we crossed that threshold earlier than ever on August 1st. On August 2nd, we passed the point at which we were using resources that could be renewed. August 2nd, of course, is the midpoint between the summer solstice and this, the fall equinox, another Earth day. And so as I garden, as I maintain a very intimate and loving and primary relationship with the earth and with my identity as an earthling, I'm also aware that that relationship is changing. It's changing the way that people begin to care for aging parents. They've always thought of their parents caring for them and suddenly they see the vulnerabilities of their parents and begin to think that they need to care for their parent. I'm feeling that about my mother earth that I need to be caring for her as she cares for me and how she does care for us. Here in Minnesota, it's still harvest season. We're harvesting all kinds of things and it's so amazing, the abundance of the earth, the generosity. As a gardener, I hit points where everyone I meet is going to be given zucchini or cucumbers or tomatoes or cantaloupe or whatever I have too much of because I need to, I need to give it away. The earth makes me be generous. The earth says, here, here's too much for you. What are you going to do with it? And the earth gives us so much, I think, that we can believe that the earth has an unending supply to give us. So as my relationship changes with the earth, my relationship with the earth holidays has also changed. I love them. I love and mark the new moons, the full moons the equinoxes and solstices, but I no longer receive them as something to which I am fully entitled and don't have to do anything about. I now feel the reciprocity that comes in a mutual relationship. 
that the earth gives to me and that I must give back. I must care for my little plot of land, this city lot that I live in here in Minneapolis. I must care for her by not putting pesticides in, by composting and putting everything that I can back out into the land, by using fish fertilizer and other healthy things to put into the soil, by watching carefully for, for pests that will hurt the earth, not necessarily needing to kill everything that annoys me and putting myself in the center, but really knowing what will damage the earth, what will cause lasting damage and making sure to remove those pests. How about you? Are you feeling this change? I remember a few years ago, the ecologist Bill McKibben wrote a book called Earth with two A's, Earth. And he said, we should have a new name because we're on a new planet now already. Global climate change isn't something that will happen later. It's happening now. It's not about our grandchildren. It's about us. And as I celebrate Earth holidays with two A's, what I feel that's different is my own sense of place, my own sense of responsibility and obligation to be part of the change. I still believe, despite evidence to the contrary, that we could save our planet and ourselves. I still believe that all the little things that we do matter, and that's why I compost. I still believe that putting my waste back out into the garden is a good thing to do rather than throwing it into landfill. I still believe that caring for land and not just allowing pesticides and bright green lawns to dominate helps all of us, not just me. Those little things that we as tiny earthlings on this big planet do, I still find such comfort in the familiarity, in knowing that fall will come and then winter will come and then spring and summer. I still rejoice in those natural rhythms and I still find strength in knowing that I am part of something so much bigger and that the earth needs me as I need the earth. On this equinox, may you find your place. May you know that you belong on your little piece of earth. May you hold it to you and be loved by it and give love to the earth. And may you know this time of change, change of lightness and darkness as a place of comfort as a place of holding, as a place of familiarity. Happy Equinox. If you're in the South, happy Spring Equinox. If you're in the North, happy Fall Equinox. And may these days of lightness and dark also be days of gratitude, joy, and generosity. <laughs>